Hi, I'm Matt Stone, the executive chef here at the Greenhouse in Perth. Today, I'm going to show you one of my favourite simple recipes to cook in the Thermomix. The Thermomix is a fantastic machine to have in the commercial kitchen and a pleasure to cook with at home. Here at the Greenhouse, we have a slightly different philosophy to the way we run our venue. The whole venue is built from 100% recycled or recyclable materials, and we try to keep the same ethos through the day-to-day -day running of the business. We have a big focus on the food that comes into the restaurant. We use a lot of sustainable, biodynamic and ethically produced food. Today we're using a very interesting product, which is a brown rice which is grown in Byron Bay. The rice is, is rain-fed and hand-picked, so it's grown in the same way wheat is. Um, it minimises the amount of water that's used to, to produce it, and it ends up with a very wholesome, whole grain product that's full of fibre to line our stomachs. So the first step in preparing this dish today is the almond milk. It's a fantastic way to substitute regular milk uh, in coffee, on cereal and just in anything else that requires milk. It's a much healthier option. It's a whole raw product so it's, it's super tasty and really good for us. I have 250 grams of almonds that I've soaked in one litre of water overnight. So we're just going to put these straight into the Thermomix. We're not going to use the whole litre of water to start with. We're going to put in about half, start blending and see how we go. Sometimes people like a, a thinner product, sometimes uh, we want a thicker product. So we'll start off with half, we can add more but we can't take any more out. So The same water that the almonds were soaked in, again it's already got a great flavour. So we just need to set this timer for four minutes. And we go to speed seven. So at the halfway point, we're just going to stop the machine, have a look and see how the consistency of the almond milk is coming along. It's a bit more of a puree at this stage, so we're going to add the rest of that soaking water just to thin it down, uh, process it for another two minutes and then we're good to pass it. Okay, so the four minutes is up on that timer. We've got a, a really nice sort of milky consistency. So we're just going to pass it through a chucks cloth. Just being sure to use the spatula to scrape out all the excess. We don't want to leave anything behind. It may need a slight bit of forces to sort of press the milk through and, and we squeeze out the meal from the almond. It's really important whilst doing this process to sort of press the mill through the sieve, otherwise we'll just get a really watery product at the end. We really want to give it a nice squeeze, a nice press to release the natural oils from the almond, which will thicken it up, give it some nice viscosity and some great flavour. If you've got a bit more time, you can quite easily just set this sieve in the fridge, leave it for a day overnight and the, the milk will eventually extract itself through. But because we don't have so much time today, this is not a bad method to use. Once you've squeezed a lot of the liquid out, you can grab the cloth, bring all the corners together, just give it a bit of a twist and a press down into the sieve. That way we can just get all of that milk out. Just really making a point at this stage, not to be shy. Get your hands in there, give it a really nice squeeze. And so here we have the almond milk. It's super easy to make in the Thermomix. Um, this can be made in a larger batch. It'll last up to a week in the fridge, uh, but it will freeze fine. So because we're so time poor these days, you know, you can, can soak quite a few, you know, loads for the Thermomix, get it done, freeze it, um, you'll have almond milk for weeks, not a problem. Okay, so now it's time to start cooking the pudding. The first step is to weigh the cream. We need 520 grams. And we're going to use the same amount of almond milk. So we can just use the same vessel because we know what we have in there. That was a full jar. So we have the 520 grams of cream in the Thermomix, um, equal parts again of the almond milk. I'm just going to add the seeds from half a vanilla pot. We've got the vanilla beans in. We're going to set the timer for approximately 8 minutes and 90 degrees. Once it's at temperature, we can turn it off and add the rice. And set it to speed 2. Whilst that mixture is coming up to temperature, 
we're going to take the milk left from making the almond milk. So again, we want to keep in mind, we don't want to be wasting any food. We've created a beautiful almond milk, now we can make some almond milk. Um, the great substitute to flour for gluten-free people. Um, slightly different flavour, great for making cakes, um, especially as a, a fresh product as this will be. So it needs to go into an oven somewhere between 80 to 100 degrees for about six to eight hours, or overnight's fine as well. We just want to make sure that the oven temperature is not too hot so it doesn't bake, we just want to dry it out. So our mixture's reached 90 degrees, we now need to weigh in 180 grams of the rice. So we have 180 grams of rice ready to go. Generally when cooking a rice dish in the Thermomix, we put it onto reverse, but because this product has such a hard husk on it, we're going to set it to speed two. We're going to set it for about 20 minutes at 90 degrees, and we'll see how we go from there. So the 20 minutes is up. We're going to have a look at this rice and see how it's going. Still looking a little runny and a little underdone at this stage. We'll continue cooking for, say, another 10 minutes at 90 degrees. We'll keep it on speed two. The rice will vary from batch to batch. If it's an older rice, it's generally going to be slightly drier, so it'll need more liquid. If it's new season, it'll need less. Because we have the Thermomix on speed two, it's going to release some of the starch from the rice, cook it a little bit easier, and thicken up the sauce really nicely. Okay, so the 10 minutes is up. Our pudding's looking nice and thick. It's still got a nice uh, viscosity to it. I like the pudding to flow on the plate, not to sit and be really stodgy. Nice and saucy. So it's looking, looking in the goods at the moment. We're just going to sweeten it up. I'm going to add two tablespoons of raw sugar. If you've got a sweet tooth, you could add an extra teaspoon. You could add some less if you don't want it so sweet. If you don't want to use sugar, honey is great. You can use definitely another form of sweetness. I'm just going to put that lid back on the thermo. Uh, I'm going to turn it up to speed four just to really mix that sugar through, get it dissolved, and we're good to go. Probably you're looking at about sort of 30 seconds to a minute just to really dissolve that sugar. Okay, so the pudding's ready. Now we're going to plate it up. Very simple method here, nothing too flash. We're just going to pour some of this rice into the bowl. The sauce has got a lovely viscosity to it, a nice thickness, really nice and rich. We're just going to add a little bit of poached rhubarb. Not being too particular about how we get it on, just nice and rustic, let it just flow onto the plate. We'll take some of this lovely poaching syrup. Again, this will bring in a little bit more sweetness to the dish, this syrup, so bearing that in mind when you're seasoning your pudding. We have the dried almond meal left over from making the almond milk. Just a lovely sprinkle of that. And again, once that's stirred through, it'll slightly thicken the rest of the pudding also. And we just have a few sweet basil leaves just to finish on the top. And just to finish this dish, to really bring it to life, we're just going to add a few drops of rose water. So rose water is readily available in Middle Eastern supermarkets. A lot of um, general supermarkets are stocking it these days. Uh, it is out there, it is easy to find. So just about six drops on the top. Once that rose water hits the, the warm pudding, it really gets fragrant. Um, it doesn't really add much of a sweetness, but just gives a really lovely floral undertone when you eat the pudding. Um, rose water works really well with red fruits, so we've got the rhubarb here, strawberries would be great as well. So here we have the warm almond milk rice pudding with rhubarb and rose. You can find this recipe and more at the Thermomix Recipe Community website.